subject of uh, This is the in the angiography that was obtained after Dr. Angelini did a stenting of the, of the right cornea.
people with the right heart and left heart gap to get uh, uh, by measures of pulmonary hypertension, why people survive, which was mild, so why was it one in criteria, and the diagnosis of an abnormal soil infection of the right coronary artery from the Intervention, the patient returned to clinic in December, four months after the angioplasty, with the current atypical chest pain for three weeks. She underwent a nuclear stress test and EKG urine test, which was both negative.
Asymptomatic all the way until April 2007, when she returned with a feeling of typical chest pain, shortness of breath, and lower extremity tingling. So she went again to the cath lab, where there was no evidence of left main stenosis nor any central stenosis, uh, which were both confirmed by either. Again, discharge asymptomatic, and one year later, she again had the typical chest pain. So she underwent another cath, which showed a 50% diffuse instant stenosis, which was confirmed by IVO, and a mild tingling without thinking of tissue collapsing in the left main. So she underwent a visual TCI with a cypher stent, 3.5 by 18. Again, by, by Ivo, we did not see any collapse of the left main. This was uh, reassuring and uh, worrying. If typical heart is an ordinary heart, it was not covered by instead the original stent. Early after, this tingling was confirmed around. After this, she went again uh, home asymptomatic, and it wasn't until a year and a half later, in October of 2009, when she again had the typical chest pain, and a uh, left cath was done, which showed no restenosis at the left main, nor at the RCA, confirmed by IVOS from only the left main and the LAD, since the IVOS catheter was unable to go to the ostium as I said, that one of the major uh, worries in the case of central glucose tissue is that you have essentially endless disease growth or the average tissue of disease growth, which is often in the left main, but which certainly is not always in the coronary artery.
between the period where she had been with her since then until she presented to the U.S. detention for about one month and shortness of breath for the first time back to school, but without the chest pain. This was on, on August. She had a negative stress test, uh, so she underwent on uh, September 1st uh, flight and left the country. to you, I'll show you the, the answer. In order to be able to use the guided catheter exactly where you want it, it is a matter of the strength of the instrument. It equalized very well and we have the impression Surgical evaluation, uh, cardiac MRI was ordered, which showed uh, in the viability of COVID, scarring the inferior apex.
cardiac MRI showed normal uh, ejection fraction was for the left femoral light ventricle. The transmural scar liquid was only in the infrared X, and the left circuit was and the MAD territory was fully viable with no prior myocardial injury. And uh, this is something found by, by the Dr. Chung, uh, mild rate light atrial enlargement due to an increase in the atrial resection deviation for a display patient. So after this, the next step was to address the surgical management, which is scheduled for tomorrow. And uh,
Yonder male, beyond uh, the neutral window of uh, uh, liability to sudden death uh, with or without exercise when they're very young, but uh, with a uh, uh, very interesting uh, <laughs> Sorry. We advertise this technology as intuitive and simple. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the way it's uh, set up, the machine here would be the machine. And then it's invited to be the guest. <laughs> of course.
That's me. Carlo, the presenter. Yes, new presenter. There you go. Learning, learning about how to use all this technical stuff. And you're up. Check the microphone. It's, I, I think it's working. Can we assume that we are connected it, and it recording? Is, it yes. is recording. Record. Yeah, I'm watching. All right. So now we will continue with the presentation of the second case, uh, which is a collaboration of a fellow, Dr. Benjamin Chung, uh, the cardioradiologist, and myself. And uh, we will uh, present this case So this is a 33-year-old black male who has a history of uh, having been in excellent uh, in athletic form. He was a, a college stu student uh, before in track and field and football. He was a football receiver for the University of Texas, basically the best in the nation. <laughs> Mildly overweight at this time, but pretty uh, fit and uh, continuing to uh, exercise regularly. He had a history of occasional chest pain and dyspnea with spells that one time brought him to the emergency room. In the emergency room he had a near syncopal spell inside chest pain and the workup, uh, simple workup in the emergency room showed uh, no abnormal uh, findings neither enzymes, uh, nor EKG, nor a chest x-ray, but nothing more sophisticated was done. Eight years before the present admission, another emergency room admission in a hospital uh, was uh, caused by sustained chest pain and dyspnea with mild uh, CK elevation. At that time, he had a heart catheterization that showed that there was a, an unusual anatomic uh, finding that was uh, discussed in everybody in town here in Houston but uh, with me. <laughs> I never saw this case before. 
he was uh, discharged against medical advice, uh, asymptomatic. Uh, eventually, he became a policeman, and he was self-employed and without insurance because he was so healthy. Recently, he developed crescendo symptoms of uh, uh, shortness of breath and chest pains uh, at the time of increased stress and increased weight with uh, evidence of new onset hypertension that was left untreated. At the time of admission in our emergency room, the patient had the chest pain for 12 hours all through, through the night and he came with uh, dyspnea, dizziness, and nausea. At the uh, emergency room EKG, it showed ST elevation, and uh, it was taken to the cath lab for emergency uh, ST elevation, myocardial infarction workup. At the time, also the enzymes uh, came to be increased with the CK that peaked uh, at uh, 18 hours since the onset of chest pain to 6,000, which is corresponding to a very sizable infarction. The troponin, interesting, were not so elevated. They were only 10. The cath was initially done by another physician in our hospital and reported to show no coronary disease but the left coronary artery could not be clearly found. So uh, the patient uh, had uh, an MRA that showed uh, a mild case of left uh, uh, coronary artery anomaly, meaning the left coronary artery was coming to the right side of the anterior commissure of the, uh, between the right and left uh, sinuses of Osalva, and then going intramural for some uh, segment that could not be uh, clarified by this technology. By MRA, MRI uh, for scar and viability, there was evidence of a, a lateral MI or myocarditis. The uh, myocardial scar was uh, intramural in place of uh, subendocardial. I think you have uh, the MRI. Did you hear in the MRI? Yeah. Huh? The CT scan. The CT scan is where? We want to discuss now with Eric the findings at the CT scan that was done before before further decisions. Can you move it to the center? The CT scan shows you've had a medium sternotomy. This is a post op evidently. Is that a high resolution thing? If it is a high resolution, but you have to zoom in. You see, this is the left coronary artery, the left anterior descending in the circumflex. The proximal left main. Uh, is uh, next to the aorta, and the right uh, is uh, coming out in the normal position. Really, this is not good enough for us to show anything in particular. Let's show the angiogram. Do we have the angiogram? Looks like a long intramural course, doesn't it? It seems to be at least against the wall of the uh, right sinus of Asalva for a long time, a long segment. Is this all you have here? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go to the engine. Back to the early dinner presentation. You have only a fixed picture. Right? 
Benjamin. Evidently, it didn't transfer from the horrible memory. The horrible memory is always more complete. Yeah. Anyway, on the basis of this initial testing, it had a, a new catheterization that involved uh, both the uh, selective catheterization of the uh, left coronary artery that was quickly achieved uh, with uh, a diagnostic uh, uh, and then uh, guiding catheter uh, right amplet one. Okay, this is a coronary angiogram that shows both coronary arteries now, the right in the left, uh, non-selective. This looks like actually coming from the uh, left sinus of our salva, but we will see with the selective injection that the ostium of the ectopic uh, left coronary artery is just on top of the right, but a separate ostium than the, than the right. Can you go to the next? This is a selective injection, so the left sinus of our salva would be here in this left anterior oblique projection. The guiding catheter uh, is uh, quite uh, advanced into the uh, left main. There is uh, an impression of uh, stenosis, but it's difficult by angiography in different projection to have uh, an idea of how severe was the stenosis. So I was, uh, was done. I think you should have the rest uh, in the back of the presentation. Huh? You don't have anything else here. Okay. So I will show the osteostenosis of 50% of baseline. The distal left main was 18 millimeter square of the osteum 9 millimeter square in diastole and 7 in systole. So there was systolic compression of the proximal left main at baseline. There was no intimal thickening uh, to think in coronary atherosclerosis. The butamine infusion at low dosage showed uh, mild worsening of stenosis when chest pain requiring morphine uh, was reported by the patient that was asked to stop. Runs of ventricular tachycardia and hypotension also occurred, requiring brief administration of dopamine on top of stopping the butamine. The gradient of the osteum uh, was absent at the baseline, but it became 30 during this time. So this is the first time we see actually a gradient, uh, because normally even 50%, 70% probably with the butamine is borderline significant for gradient. That's, uh, eventually, we became conv uh, convinced that, that this was the reason indeed uh, of the acute myocardial infarction, not myocarditis, and that uh, surgery was indicated and consistent with the history of recurrent uh, chest pain and shortness of breath. He went uh, to surgery where the slit-like ostium was uh, observed and the surgeon described something like a membrane uh, in the inside of the um, right sinus of Asava close to the anterior commissure, the membrane-like structure that is in the inside of the coronary artery was removed, uh, so there is a, a widening of the ostium of the ectopic artery, and the patient made an uneventful recovery 
and had no more chest pain nor shortness of breath. Eventually, because of uh, uh, his absence of uh, uh, insurance coverage, he refused even a free uh, follow-up uh, with a CAT scan and geography, but uh, he's doing well. Uh, this is uh, a CAT scan of the coronary arteries, unfortunately, is a fixed uh, imaging, but this part is where we think is intramural not very clear to see by this method a clear uh, severity of stenosis. This is the normal right coronary artery and and the left main, uh, a pretty large vessel but probably narrow at this level. You cannot be totally sure on the basis of these uh, pictures. With the tilted oblique view, maybe it's more obvious the proximal uh, left main being uh, uh, narrow. Do you have any idea, Eric, of anything more to notice? Well, uh, it's interesting on the cardiac uh, markers that uh, the pattern that you had there with the high CPK and the low trophonin is more like what you see with Takatsusubo syndrome. It's also more like what you see with someone who has uh, a um, airbag that explodes in the car and they have uh, chest trauma and then they get all the CPK and they get a very little bit of when they have some myocardial injury from that. And so it's uh, it's more like a, uh, you know, someone had a temporary problem that then resolved and had better blood flow afterwards. But you see, he never had any left ventricular dysfunction like a Takatsubo. Yeah. 6,000 is a, right. a major Takatsubo. CPK also doesn't increase much uh, as the, the troponin doesn't increase much in Takatsubo. But this is more typically, in my opinion, of uh, patients with renal failure that have CPK yeah. elevation and not much uh, troponin elevation. But uh, it's really hard to see the anatomy there, but uh, I'm sure that there's a, it's almost like they have a common origin in an intramural course. Yeah. It's hard to tell. The, the ostium is probably here, right. but it's slit like, it's so it's extended. Okay. This is the picture of uh, uh, the ostium, and uh, this is a movie? No, The previous yeah, movie? This is moving up and down to see the worst uh, uh, obstruction. And you see uh, the calculation we gave uh, eventually with significant stenosis uh, in the range of 50% uh, of baseline and 70-75% uh, with the stimulation that was stopped uh, at uh, 10 micro per kilo per minute at baseline. This is, yeah, 65% stenosis in systole. This is the big problem in uh, calculating exactly the severity of stenosis. We don't show here, but we always put the EKG as part of the recording because we know that the systolic and diastolic the second area change. And uh, we have recently, as we showed in the previous session, shown how much uh, variation in the cross-sectional area occurs during the um, cardiac cycle. But evidently the left main uh, behaves different than the right that also uh, because of the smaller territory is not so uh, uh, manifested, manifested in ischemia. But the left main 50% that becomes 70-75 can be cause of significant diffuse damage. I don't know what to make of that scar or myocarditis that they found in the free wall. Evidently that is not the typical finding of Takasubo either. The myocarditis that you're talking about, the MRI, do you have a picture? Did you see a picture of that? We don't have it here. No. Okay. That other MRI, I just thought about it, uh, wasn't, that wasn't the late gadolinium that's just a white blood study. Had the he had the report. On the other one, on the other patient. He had the report uh, of the other MRI. 
and the other, I remember the other MRI. That's, MRI. Not, that's not an LGE picture we're looking at. It's a white blood picture because the uh, blood should be nulled and should be totally black. Okay, I apologize because I selected the picture and I thought that that was what he, he reported in the report, but he, in the report he called this as a, a scar. All right, so this is the difference in uh, uh, cross-section area of the reference uh, and uh, worse uh, stenosis in the proximal. So it's a significant stenosis in the absence of increased thickness of the intima. This is what was uh, found in, uh, in surgery before doing the enlargement of the ostium. This is the ostium. It's always uh, nice to see something in color, but unfortunately is not so clear. This is after enlarging the ostium. and uh, confirmation that he is doing well, but uh, we would like to do, especially in this case, is a follow-up because this kind of uh, osteoplasty are susceptible to restenosis by intima growth uh, like uh, stenting. So this is a case like the first uh, with some very unusual features with the myocardial infarction by enzymes uh, not clearly myocardial infarction by uh, MRI, but uh, the suspicion of a localized intramural incomplete scar with a very important elevation of uh, CK, uh, but not of troponin, uh, chest pain and shortness of breath and uh, nausea and cold sweating like an acute event, but uh, evidently this did not recur clinically at least. Uh, we are anxious to have him back in the system, hopefully when uh, the Obamacare will cover his, his uh, uh, health services. It is possible that the patient that was able to be an athlete becomes symptomatic even to this level if there was uh, indeed dilatation of the ascending aorta in this last uh, few years due to overweight and uh, development of hypertension. But surely this testing of uh, uh, aortic dilatation distensibility is an important testing because I think it is the missing link uh, for the information we have now. I think we always start doing that. Uh, we'll come up with a methodology for Excellent. it. Excellent. Excellent. Because definitely we have a condition that could lead uh, to more severe stenosis uh, in a uh, variable way during the physiologic conditions. But the demonstration this indeed is the phenomenon that, occur, that occurs when a patient from asymptomatic and being a, a very active and successful athlete is subject to something like a, a presyncopal spell or a, a acute myocardial infarction is difficult to explain. Very good. And so the subintimal, the thing about the membrane, was that just uh, something that had to do with the subintimal course? Or the well, he calls it the membrane, membrane. but it's actually yeah. the inner layer of the intramural course of the right Yeah, that, that's what it was. It's not the membrane. It wasn't a dissection or something like that. No, the artery goes inside the wall, right. so the inside looked right. like a membrane, right. and they right. cut it off. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's Okay, with that, I think that concludes our session today. And yeah. this is a conclusion of the conclusion of the day. Yeah. Very good. It is frustrating to have no idea who is listening. Yeah, we're going to get this down to 